Right, so welcome to this video. This is a six in the series of new to mode homes. And if you've not watched any of the series before, there will be a link in the description below or at the end of the video, there'll be a card you can click on. You can watch the rest of the new to mode home series, which are made mainly during the lockdown. So I thought it'd be time to sort of refresh the series by doing a video on touring in the winter. So in this video, I'm going to look at why tour in the winter, how to prepare. Now, I've got a fair bit of preparation uh, to talk about. What to do when you're traveling and the sort of routines you might want to look at when you're pitched up on, on your site. The things you can do when you get there and what to do when you get home or back into storage. So why tour in winter? Well, peace and quiet. It's always quieter in the winter. Cozy nights in the van with the heating on. That's a good book, games. It keeps the motorhome in use, uh, keeps the engine running and keeps the wheels turning. And it's generally good to get out there, out of the house and perhaps get a bit of fresh air. It perhaps means that you can spend more time with friends or family, uh, go for a meet up with them. So let's talk about the preparations for winter touring. So first of all, is your motorhome winterized? Some vans have fully insulated tanks uh, others like ours have tank heaters, uh, so, so have a check. Do some basic vehicle checks. I think this is important. You could do things like check the brakes are in good condition. Uh, consider having your vehicle serviced. It might be a good time to have your vehicle serviced if you've not had it serviced previously. Check things like windscreen fluid. and You've got the correct concentration of the antifreeze mixture in the windscreen washer fluid. There's nothing worse than frozen windscreen wipers. Have some de-icer ready, bound to need it. And a good scraper. <laughs> There's nothing worse than having some de-icer and trying to scrape the ice off with a credit card. If it's likely to be icy and snowy, you might want to consider getting snow chains or perhaps snow socks. In some countries, that's the law. Make sure you have plenty of LPG with you. Make sure your gas tanks are full. Nothing worse than being out somewhere and you need to use some gas and you can't heat the van. So that's important. I tend to use propane because propane works all year round. Uh, and that's the red tanks. Uh, you may see butane gas and they tend to be the blue tanks. Now butane tends to stop producing gas around about freezing. If you're going off grid, make sure your vehicle and your leisure battery are in good condition and charged up. You might want to put the vehicle on charge before you actually set off to make sure they are charged up. And if you have any power banks, you might want to make sure that they're similarly charged. So clothing, you might want to take some warmer clothes. You might want to check the condition of your boots. A good head torch is, is always useful, particularly when it gets darker at night. And it tends to get darker around about three o'clock in the full midwinter. Can I take this off now? Yes, so take some good waterproof, weatherproof coats. Uh, you might want to consider uh, some good boots and shoes, socks, those sort of things, the sensible things that you'd need for uh, winter. Take some games, perhaps um, we like Rummy Cub or Travel Scrabble or chess or something like that. Something to keep you entertained when you're not wanting to go out. The weather's really horrible. You might want to stay in the van and uh, just uh, enjoy yourself with a, a few games. Remember your charging leads for your phones. It's easy to forget those. And if uh, you're taking backup batteries, make sure they're fully charged. I recommend using a thermal screen. The one I've got is a tailor-made thermal screen and it really does help to keep the, the warmth in and the cold out and it also prevents condensation on the window. So definitely recommend that when, you, when you're pitched up. So if you're using an aqua roll, you can get a thermal blanket for that aqua roll to help prevent it from freezing. Uh, that's a really good idea if you're using an aqua roll to fill up your tanks. Good idea to check what campsites are open before you set off. Some campsites will close probably around just after New Year, but some campsites stay open all year. Remember when you arrive, it could be dark. If you arrive in about 
about uh, three o'clock, it could actually get dark in, in midwinter. So try and arrive early-ish and uh, don't leave it too late to get there. Remember, you don't really want to be connecting up and uh, filling up your water and empty your toilet when it's pitch black out there. Not ideal. Always check the weather report, especially if you're near the coast. It can get very windy, as you probably realise. So uh, you'd really want to keep an eye on the weather forecast. And uh, always change your plans if necessary. Empty out that summer stuff. You know, you're not going to need the, uh, the extra chairs, the tables. If you're not going to be sitting outside, get rid of the paddling pool and all that sort of stuff. Now, when you're actually travelling, um, you can travel with some water in the tank. We often do. If it's not too cold, um, we, we, we'll put a bit of water in the tank and we'll switch on the tank heaters. Now, this van's got tank heaters, which will keep the water above freezing. We've also got en route heating now, and it allows us to use the gas to heat the, the radiators in the motor when we're going along. And that is really useful when it's very cold outside. So uh, have a look at that. Your van needs to have a crash protection sense, sensor fitted to it. Uh, it's called a Truma CS crash, crash sensor, I think. Um, but that needs to be fitted uh, if you're going to be uh, using gas whilst you're traveling. But if it's really cold, remember to empty the water and the waste tanks. Uh, if it's you know down minus three, minus four, five, and getting down that way, it's not worth the risk of travelling with water in there that might freeze when you're going along. So if it gets really cold, empty the water out. You can travel with a small container. You know, take a small uh, bottle of water or, or a, a container like we've got, and you can use that for flushing the toilet and for making a cup of coffee when you stop. When you get pitched up, get into a routine and do the things that you need to do before it gets dark. Uh, check your water, make sure you've got enough water, uh, make sure you've got enough gas. If you need to change the gas, do that before it gets dark and empty the toilet. So get a little routine going that makes sure that you've got all the things that you need for those long winter nights. Again, you can fill the tanks if you've got tank heaters. And remember, you've got heating in the van, which is going to keep the van warm and that heat's going to transfer into the tank. So uh, whilst you're on site, there's a good chance that the tanks are not going to freeze. If you've got, certainly if you've got the tank heaters and the van's heated all the time. But uh, again, if it's getting really cold, you know, uh, skiing temperature cold, you might want to consider emptying the tanks and just using water that you keep inside. Empty your wastewater regularly. Uh, again, this is part of the routine, but make sure that you empty it regularly, at least twice a day. You don't really want the, either the wastewater freezing in the waste tank or freezing in the waste master. Uh, that is just as bad and it makes it very difficult to empty, of course. So get into that routine. The other thing you can do with wastewater is that you can get glycol-free uh, antifreeze that you can put in your waste tank. I suppose if you're traveling and you're not able to empty your water on site, then that might be quite a useful thing to stop the, that water in your waste tank freezing before you can empty it. Obviously it goes without saying, you're going to want to put the heating on, but we find that the timer that we use is very useful. You can have the heating slightly lower at night so you don't get overheated. You can have it on a little boost uh, during the morning and on a steady temperature during the day and perhaps warm it up in the evening when you're watching telly or playing Rummy Cup. Important to check that your flue is not blocked. We've got Audi central heating and there's a little flue on the side of the van and if it's snowing, you don't want snow to block that flue up. It can be very dangerous. I know some vans have got flues that go up through the roof and uh, you want to make sure that that doesn't get covered in snow and blocked. You may want to take a little, little heater with you, a little fan heater. We've got a little, um, a radiant heat heater, I forget what it's called now, but a little heater. But what you don't want to do is take a gas heater or something with a naked flame. Um, a small electric heater, one kilowatt would be ideal. If you've got a duvet or duvelos like we've got, you might want to consider increasing the tog of the, uh, the duvet. We're going for a 10.5 tog duvet in our duvelets. Uh, hopefully that will keep us a little bit warmer in the winter. 
Remember to use that jacket for your aqua roll. That's going to be very useful. Put a thermal screen on the windscreen. Buy a thermal screen if you haven't got one already. I highly recommend the tailor-made screens. Uh, like I say, they do a really good job of keeping the heat inside the van when you're pitched up. It gives you a little bit of privacy as well. That's uh, another factor. What about things to do? Well, I could probably leave it to your imagination and things you might want to do on a winter's evening. But one thing that you might want to do is perhaps consider a nice meal in a nice cosy pub with a roaring log fire. That, that appeals to me. Uh, some uh, nice walks. Uh, it, it's nice to be out in the air rather than being stuck inside in the house, get out and enjoy the fresh air. Uh, some people will probably want to do something a bit more adventurous than that, but uh, you could do that. You could have early nights, you could catch up on sleep, you could have a lie-in. That sounds good, quite like the idea of that. Let us know what, uh, what sort of things you like to do in the winter when you're in your motorhome or caravan. So when you get home and you're back at base or you're back in storage, you really want to consider uh, making sure you've got no more water in the system. So drain it down, empty the tanks, make sure there's no water in the taps. And um, if you possibly can, I suggest leaving the heating on low, perhaps about 10 degrees. If you're plugged in, you can do that. We're lucky because we're on, plugged in on our drive and we can leave the heating on low and that helps keep the damp at bay. If you can't and you're in storage, you're going to see lots of videos about uh, tips for storage coming up at the moment. But uh, an obvious thing really would be if you can't heat the van, you've got to make sure that you're not getting damp in there. So you might want to consider moisture traps. You might want to take all the cushions out of the van, the bedding and take that home with you. So I think that's about it. Uh, it's a really great time to be thinking about getting out in the van. It's quieter out there. There's so much more to see and to enjoy still. And uh, it's good for you. It's good for the motorhome. So get out and do it. <laughs> um, so if you've found this, use this useful, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hit that notifications icon. And we'll get back to you soon with another video. See you soon. Bye then.